Not more awkward or uncomfortable than Nathan Fillion, but... Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I'll take it from here. Yes, please do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nathan Fillion. You might know me from such shows as Firefly. <laughs> Castle. <laughs> but probably Firefly. <laughs> so glad you guys could make it. Another sold-out panel for Mr. Robot. So that you know, a sold out panel means you have provided surgeries for 16 children with cleft palate. Well done, you guys. Well done. <laughs> this is a good show. It's pretty intense. I've been watching it this morning. We have a trailer for you. We got a trailer. Let's go to the trailer. Action. What I'm about to tell you is top secret. A conspiracy bigger than all of us. There's a powerful group of people out there that are secretly running the world. I'm talking about the guys no one knows about, the guys that are invisible. The top 1% of the top 1%, the guys that play God without permission. And now I think they're following me. Employee number ER280652. Just a regular cybersecurity engineer, but I'm a vigilante hacker by night. I usually do this kind of thing from my computer, but this time I wanted to do it in person. I started intercepting all the traffic on your network. That's when I noticed something strange. That's when I decided to hack you. Evil Corp, the largest conglomerate in the world. A monster of modern society. I think you secretly hate it here. No, I love it here. <laughs> Exciting time in the world right now. Exciting time. What do you want from me? You sense something wrong with the world. You know it controls you and everyone you care about. You said there was a project. What's the project? What if you could set in motion the largest revolution the world will ever see? What are you talking about? The single biggest incident of wealth redistribution in history. This is it. Time to shut them down. Their networks are getting attacked. Thirteen billion dollars, that's exactly how much they've lost. Who did this? Every record gone. One guy, the whole thing comes down. Oh, hi. Elliot. Just a tad. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rami Malik. And Christian Slater. Hey! Hello. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, thank you so much. Gentlemen, welcome. All right. Thanks welcome. for having us. Thank you very much for coming. This is such a big deal. Mr. Robot, how are they treating you over at USA? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, we are. I mean, they're just... So they're, far, so good. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're great. Really I heard great. you already have a pickup for season two. Yes, we did. Yeah, you can start forming your allegiance because it's coming back. You don't have to, It's not one of those you're, you're going to give up on after a season. That's right. That's right. Yeah, second season. Right? I don't know much about the industry, but I do know that doesn't happen very often when you've only... Yeah. I speak from personal experience. When, when you've only aired three episodes, how, how many aired by the time you were already... They picked, picked us up before with the first one even aired. That's how much faith they had in the show. Thank you, USA. Something else that didn't escape my notice. What was it like the first time you saw uh, that promo with the laurels? Those awards. Oh, that's really cool. Um, one thing that I always, when I saw that, I was like, you'd be lucky to get that out of a film. And we're just right. a TV show that, you know, won South by Southwest, went to Tribeca. Pretty cool, I gotta say. Yeah, I mean, going to Austin uh, and, and going to that South by Southwest festival was extraordinary and, and fun. And, uh, 
And then it was great because the audience afterwards, there were a lot of like technical people in the audience and they were uh, very happy with how um, you know, strict and, and uh, true it was to, yeah. to that world. So that to the great. hacker world, yes. to the accuracy. Yeah, mm-hmm. very yeah. authentic, very accurate. Right, does it feel that way? Yeah. It's so dark, it's so beautifully shot. The light, does it take forever to light it? Or is it like, oh, let's just do two. Hmm. <laughs> The guy we had, uh, this guy Tim Ives did the pilot, and he's incredible. He does, he does girls. He does, uh, uh, what's the Kevin Spacey show? House, House of Cards. Cards. Yeah. Wow. And then we got a, this, the guy that's done the season. His name's Todd Campbell, and he's phenomenal as well. He does. They don't take. I mean, they take uh, the amount of time it, it takes to do something that's artsy and fun, and uh, but they're they're great craftsmen. Beautiful. Let's open up the floor to some questions, I got because I know you have some right there in the with the nerd shirt. I love your shirt, by the way. Thanks. Yeah. Hi guys. Hey. Thanks so much for being here, um, Christian. This is actually for you. Okay. If JD had not been such a sociopath and Heather's, yeah, is this the character that he would have grown up to be? Good question. <laughs> ah, I like the tie-in. That was nice. I think, yeah, it's, it's safe to say, yeah, that uh, had J.D. not blown up at the end, this is, uh, and, and maybe that was all smoke and mirrors, and uh, yeah, I, I, but yeah, probably a, probably a good guess, absolutely, absolutely, an anarchist then and an anarchist now. Next question. Gentlemen, what, I'm going to dealer's choice, why don't you guys pick your questions? Oh! How's that? Okay, okay. You want to go with right here? Oh, here. Yeah, right, right here. Hi, gentlemen. Um, Christian Slater, you are? Yes. Hi. I love you. Thanks for having us here, by the way. Thank you. (laughs) Anyway, um, I was going to ask you a question, but I do, I have been watching this show and I'm all cut up. Oh, great. So, your character, uh, now that you're playing Elliot in real life, are you, um, is your level of paranoia going up now that you see what's going on on the show? Yes. I mean... (laughs) Definitely. I mean, there were what there were glitches and with United Airlines the other day. What happened? New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock Exchange. Wall Street oh. Journal. I mean, it's it's just been one of these things that's been building and growing, and uh, it's you know it's very scary. There's very no doubt scary. about it. And what's cool about the show? Someone asked us yesterday. It's like, are you going to rip from the headlines? And it seems like things that have already come up in our episodes are going to start happening. That's a, that's that's what's cool about the show. Is that. <laughs> I'm a bit cool nervous. Cool and horrifying. Yeah. Pre- yeah, yeah. What are we predicting? Oh, man. Uh, Let's take- but yes, I'm very paranoid. We all should be. It's a creepy world out there. With- yeah, I mean, change your passcodes. You know, stay on top of it. Update your passwords. Don't use your dog pet names, you know, for, for your pass. Yeah, I see your face right there going, oh, my God, that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to do that. It's, uh, it's, you have to really, really be careful. What if I use, like, a pet name of somebody I know, but I capitalize a random letter in the middle? See, now we know how your mind works. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This was yeah. wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys continue. I'm going to change some passwords. <laughs> right. uh, you go. You go for it. Uh, hi. Hey. Uh, my question for Rami. Um, I love the scenes between you and Gloria Rubin. Um, I do too. Yeah. Um, what, what I love about those episodes is that those episodes, those scenes is that there's always this social insight, especially from Elliot. Since we didn't get one in season three, and um, how would you, as Elliot, reconcile that idea between wanting to insert yourself in society but not knowing how, with society maybe not knowing how to accept someone who's different or just doesn't fit the norm? Oh man, that's a great question. Um, I would say that's a struggle that Elliot, you know, is, is faced with throughout the season. And, uh, you know, with the help of, of Krista and, and the few friends he has and the relationships that he makes throughout the season, he tries to figure out if it's even possible. And I think for a lot of people, they think, you know, it's better to just exist in my own world because the world is never really going to accept me the way I am. And that's a big dilemma for him. And I think he's going to be figuring that out as, as long as, as for, for this episode, uh, for the season. I, I know that much already. So 
hopefully that it'll help us all, you know, accept other people in some way and, and their faults. And uh, I don't know. I don't have no answers yet because he's still figuring it out. That was a good answer for no answer. All right. That was a great answer right. for no answer. Another question? Great question. Great question. Uh, okay. Uh, right there? Yeah. Sure. Lovely flower dress. Oh, thank nice. you. Um, Very nice. Yep. Hello? Hello. Um, I just got back from Normandy for the Band of Brothers reunion, oh, and yeah. I was wondering if you still keep in contact with your Pacific castmates. Yeah, we do. We're re really close. Uh, I see a lot of them. We don't do the reunions as often as they do because I think we just see each other quite a bit. Uh, but those guys made such, we made such great friends and, uh, and we, you, we all are in contact. It really is a special group. Walking away from that, you don't always, when you're done with the show, you don't always keep in touch with people the way you wish you had, but those guys, it's, it was different with them. Um, and I, I work in cybersecurity, and everybody in our company, like, loves your show. Oh, that's They're, like, great. tweeting the shit out of it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Another Good one. Good business to be in. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. I, too, do security for a company that's some, one, something less than Evil Corp. Um, the, the tech that you guys do is spot on. Is there, what's the advisory process look like? You guys have someone who knows what they're doing advising you. A list of felons? <laughs> yeah. I mean, safe to say. Some of them are criminals, yes. I mean, some of them are so anonymous that, like, we're getting information through texts and things like that. I mean, where the, the, the actual identity of the person is, uh, is unknown. What was that? We'll take any information we can get if it's from Black Hats, sure. Uh, we have some great tech advisors on the show, and, uh, they, you know, they just... Sam, our, our executive producer, Sam Esmail, he just wants it all, as authentic as possible, so he's hired the right guys. And, uh, you know, I think, I think from the perspective of even hackers, there are some hackers that have talked to us about getting on season two. Uh, I'm, I'm not kidding. Are, are they good actors? Are they good actors? Are they good? A I don't. I think they just want to advise. Or it's like technical. Yeah. Oh, I see. Good. I say. Yeah. I'm like, give me a part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Go for it. Is there any chance that this is just a master plot? by your character from breaking in to get all <laughs> safe fired. And <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, I, that was definitely a fun character. Um, I mean, this, uh, Mr. Robot does have uh, an agenda. Um, uh, it, uh, it's just, I can't wait for you guys to see the whole thing, really. You know, I mean, that's really, we just finished doing the last episode on, um, I finished on Wednesday, and it's just the whole journey that Elliot goes on is, is unbelievable. Uh, I was really uh, very excited. I just I just can't wait for everybody to see the whole thing. Yes, yeah, it's, really, it's right? really special. It is, yeah. For all the characters. I mean, you yep. really will find, uh, you, you'll invest in everybody. Everybody's story kind of comes to fruition by the time you hit ep episode 10. You know a lot about all of us, you know. And, uh, Uh, Girls are terrific. Yeah. Glory yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I like it over there. I yeah, can get like, used to this. I want to go back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. We just wrapped the season. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I'll come back to you. Or, yeah. You know. We want the internet to hear you. Oh, sorry. There you go. Ah. I was just asking if you guys think your characters would come to Comic Con or something like this. If you know. Well, I mean, don't be surprised if you see a couple of F-Society masks walking around. It could, you know, right. it could happen, you know. It's a good Halloween costume, isn't it? The F-Society mask? Yeah, yeah. That'll be here next year for sure. Yeah, full-on tuxedo and tails and top hat. And yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, my turn, right? Uh, right there. Yeah. Next to, yeah. 
Hi, uh, Christian. Yes. Uh, you've played a lot of roles, uh, the sweet guy, the mm. psycho guy. Yeah. Uh, how is that? <laughs> how is the sweet that? psycho guy. <laughs> How is it that they're all so sexy? Oh! Do <laughs> oh, uh, we leave one alone? Well, yeah, all right. Yeah, Let's room. give him the room. No! <laughs> oh my God. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I don't want to look too closely at why, but um, I'll just, uh, you know, let's just leave it at that. I, I, I mean, my. <laughs> My mind is it's hard for Christian just not to be sexy on his own. Oh, right? my God. <laughs> yes, I'll be polite and that's it. Great. Yeah. Go for it. What is this costume, by the way? Yeah. Um, yeah. I am Deadly Nightshade from Captain America 164. 164. Cool. Guys. I, went, I went through the Marvel anthology and tried to find the most random person I could find. So. Awesome. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, so, Christian, this question's for you. You know, you've had such an amazing career doing film, TV, and stage, and I was just wondering mm. um, which medium's your favorite and why? Uh, that's a great question. It is a great question. Yeah. Uh, yeah I guess it... it, it it has, it does all come down to the group of people. I mean, I do think I enjoy every aspect of this business. Uh, like, yeah, getting to work with somebody like Sam Esmail, it makes it thrilling and exciting when somebody's that prepared and that thorough and has it all thought out. Uh, like, I'm working with Rami, that experience is fantastic. Uh, I did get to do One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in London, and that was like, through the roof exciting. It was like a, a rock concert every night. I, I, I love doing that. That's got to be a dream. That's that was good. Yeah, I, I got a real kick out of that. Um, and then I'm going to go do uh, Spam a lot uh, at the Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. Christian can sing. Well, <laughs> we'll see. I got the mic right now. So uh, <laughs> you want to test it maybe. out? show I gotta save, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll tease Yeah, all right. Um, it's like a Sinatra. That's like my standby. I could sing a couple of bars of Sinatra. Yeah, for a Oh my, I'm so pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, awesome. All right, here we go. All right. That's life. Yeah. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April, shot down in May. But I know I'm gonna change that tune when I'm back on top, back on top in June. Woo! That's nice. I could get used to that. We'll, we'll find a karaoke place later. Yeah. That, that'd be good. <laughs> Your turn. All right, this gentleman back here. Yeah, you. Why not? Yes. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, Christian, that was a killer Frank Sinatra impression, oh, by the come way. Come on, thanks. That was amazing. Um, I actually wanted to talk to you for a second about a movie you did uh, with John Woo called Broken Arrow. Sure. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of that movie. It's incredibly fun. And uh, I wonder if you would just talk about ex that experience and if you were to be provided with that opportunity again to either work with John Woo or work on a, a big budget set piece driven action film, is that something you'd, you'd be interested in doing? think so, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I had a great time working on that. Uh, look, I mean, I, I, I grew up at a great time, you know, when like Raiders of the Lost Ark came out. And, you know, I remember just being a 12 year old kid and going to see that movie and just going, God, man, I'd love to do something like that someday. And, and uh, I would, you know, pull John Woo aside and say, hey man, would it be possible for me to be like dragged behind this truck, you know, today? And, <laughs> He didn't know what I was referring to, but he was like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. Yeah, so I got to definitely live out a lot of fantasies there. Um, That's so cool. Yeah, it was fun, man. <laughs> it was really fun. Uh, and of course, working with John Travolta was great. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to do both of those things, work with John Travolta again and, and uh, participate in some kind of action type of thing, maybe with John Woo. That would be fun. Good question. Thank you. Oh, you picked the last, right? Yeah, no okay, problem. okay. Uh, right there. Sure. Uh, Hi. Hey. Uh, got a question for Rami. Um, 
when you were putting your character together, when you're thinking about all, you, you've got a lot going on and you've got a lot of different layers. What, besides the pilot, what else did you use to sort of draw on this character? And what did you, what was this, you know, the motivation or whatever? Uh, well, I just wanted to be as informed as possible because I knew uh, he was already complicated in the pilot. I'm like, what is this? You know, what, what layers are we going to peel from this guy and, to, you know, reveal there's going to be so much more. So let me get inside of what's going on in this, this kid's head. So I just did, I, I read as much as I could about certain, you know, illnesses, mental illnesses and anxiety and, and how, you know, the triggers of, of, of how these things begin in people. And uh, I started seeing a psycho. I almost thought about going to see a psychologist as Elliot. Wow, yeah. wow. And I'm like, that would be so <laughs> deceptive, great. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could you imagine? And it would be, I mean, I don't know, that's a bit method, but. No, that's it great. It would be cool, right? Yeah, totally, yeah. Um, I was getting my hair cut, and uh, my, my, I was telling the, talking about the show to uh, the guy that cuts my hair, and he said, my wife's a psychologist. She runs this, she runs this uh, a place to, uh, here in Los Angeles. So I started talking to her and asking her a bunch of questions. And um, just, I, I started to have you know, these daily conversations with her to the point where I really got to understand him uh, through, through patients of hers. And uh, and then Sam and uh, Sam Esmail, our executive producer, ended up hiring her on the show. So oh. as accurate as the tech stuff is, he also, you know, he wanted, you know, Elliot's condition to be spot on as well. So I'm still figuring it out, but I just want, you know, I had myself go to these places that, that uh, I learned from, from books and from the psychologist. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay, right there. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Ask something else. Yeah, yeah. Um, Go ahead. Oh, oh sorry. Um, I think I'm, I was real glad that you guys were renewed for season two. Um, my question is, <laughs> yeah. uh, my question is, has there been a lot of pressure on the, the production, the producers of the, the, the show? to from the corporate America to not have a season two and to to kind of yeah I know it goes into the conspiracy theory concept of it wow uh, I mean I don't I don't, I don't know uh, I mean no no it's a great question it's it's, uh, it's yeah totally legitimate question yeah, I mean, and I don't know about, no we all everyone is everyone monetarily benefits from having It's in their best interest to have us doing a show, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, you paid for tickets, didn't you? Right? So, if there's a, yeah, if there's ever money involved, I don't think it's. I mean, in, inevitably, it's threatening, but that's the goal, right? Sure, money. Sure. Yeah. Well. <laughs> for no, not for us. I mean, but for I guess, us. and it, well, yeah. I mean, like a show maybe like this uh, can. Uh, raise some level of awareness yeah. about corruption and corporate greed, and maybe that would be one of the reasons why they would want to uh, try and quell it in some yeah. way. But, um, you know, this is when it comes down to, like, you know, here's this show about a small organization um, having so much power over a huge conglomerate, you know, and, and, uh, it's, and there's people like that that are out there, like we saw with the Sony hack. I mean, that was just a small... Uh, I don't actually know what organization it was. I'm assuming that it was a small, you know, it could just have been one guy at a, at a keyboard, you know, and if you have the power to control that keyboard and uh, manipulate the system, you know, maybe it's that one guy in that room that's more powerful than the conglomerates. What's that? Yeah. It was Rami preparing for the role. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Your turn, yeah. Uh, my oh. questions for uh, all three of you. Oh, sorry, did I? No, no, it's good. <laughs> all good. Yeah. All right. Uh, my question for all three of you: uh, As people of above-average income, if you were given a hypothetical switch to flip for wealth redistribution, would you do it? Wow. I've been waiting for this question. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm so glad you have. That's great. <laughs> That's. 
Well, I look with, with I will put it this way: with the, the place we're in, we have the ability to affect some change because our voices are heard, and yes, we have the you know the money to do so now. So, in a way, it helps because you know we can tell the story we want to, and maybe you know maybe that if, uh, causes one of us to change things, all of us to change things, but. You have, we have a platform to do so. So I don't know that I would give up that platform because from, from this place, maybe we can do more than uh, being an example from the other side. Good answer. Got anything? No, that's great. That was All right. fan, <laughs> fantastic. I'm, I'm mesmerized. I, yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> Okay. Good answer, good, though. Good, uh, good question. Very good question. Tough question. Really good question. Yeah. Jeez, take it easy, people. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> oh. This one won't be as hard. Okay. Um, two quick things. First, if it's possible, I'd like to request if I could get your signature <laughs> on Look. this picture. I'm like 16 in that photo. For <laughs> a donation for Operation Smile. Of course, yeah. Stuff. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, man. That's one hot photo, right. Christian. Yeah, Thank look at that. you. <laughs> yeah, it's been around a while. It's me and my dog, Winston. <laughs> 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 Too much. <laughs> oh, Winston. Winston. <laughs> he was a good dog. Oh, well. Aww. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Wait, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> well, we heard a little bit that we're going to know. It's about not my password, by the way, Winston. <laughs> Yeah, right? He was a good dog. Yeah, yeah. That we're going to know a little bit about more of the characters as we go through the season. And I was just wondering, Christian, if that includes your character, if we're going to learn a little bit more about you, or if you're going to remain a mystery. I think it's, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Sam, uh, Esmail really has it mapped out, and I think leaves a lot of, like, breadcrumbs along the way. And uh, it's kind of one of those shows it's definitely not like a multitasking show. You have to sort of pay attention and there's, there's, I think, little clues along the way as to, you know, who Mr. Robot is and, and you know, what his real agenda is. And uh, I think Sam handles it all very well and deftly. And, and uh, by the time we got to filming the last uh, uh, episode uh, uh, of the season, you know, I, I, I was thrilled with the direction that it went and, and I couldn't have been happier. Go ahead again, just because you have great questions. Yes. So does everybody. She's going to kill us. <laughs> all right. Um, also, um, theories and kind of to see, all right, this person's kind of on the money. My latest theory is that I think that Angela is a lot more involved than what we've been seeing so far. Mm. Um, so, yeah, your opinion on those. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. I mean, she brought you, she brought your character into all safe. So, um, yeah, so what are your opinion mm, on some of those theories? She's good. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, I, I just was watching the episodes. I do miss things that I, re I remember reading, you know, two months ago when we shot that episode. And so. I'm constantly, you know, with you as an audience member going, wait, what is he not, what is Sam not telling us? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I question everything as well from episode to episode. I don't ask him for a lot of the answers, like the way I used to. When I first got the scripts, I was like, tell me what happens with this person, with this person, where am I going, who is this person? Uh, now now I'm, I just want to be surprised because I think that's the world that we're all going to exist in where you don't know necessarily is, someone's yeah. agenda. Yeah, and that, that's the fun thing. It's like be, getting to be surprised. Yeah. Like we'll sit in the, uh, and do the read-throughs of the shows and, and uh, might have a few answers of, of things that are coming up, but uh, you know, there's other people in the room that don't know and they're like, what? Yeah. No, oh my, you know. So those are fun moments. But there is some, it does feel like something's going on with Angela more than meets the eye, right? Huh. I wish mm. I had more answers for you. But yeah. We're all going to find out together. Yeah. Uh, Who hasn't who had, had... Let's, let's do... Uh, for, yeah? Have Richard, you? Yeah. Go for it. Hey, so uh, I'm one of the people who actually watched Breaking In. Okay. Christian. Thank you. And so I'm wondering... <laughs> You're the guy. Yeah. I'm the guy. 
Unfortunately, I don't have a Nielsen box. Okay. <laughs> so let's say that Oz is Mr. Robot. Okay. What sort of psychological break happened to him to turn him into Mr. Robot? <laughs> turn him into that paranoid guy. I think his show got canceled. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's great. At your expense. He's like, thank you. All right. That's what else? Great. Who hasn't asked one? Well, I'll get back to you. <laughs> back there in the hat. That's you. HQ, right? Is that... Hi. Yes? Hi, Christian Slater. Hello. Um, me and my friend Monica. Hi, Monica. We're huge friends. And um, she just watched Bed of Roses the other night just oh. to remind herself of it. And we loved you in Breaking Dawn. Um, Break All right. And, um, okay. I just... <laughs> I just wanted to know if you guys had a free day to walk around Comic Con. Like, what kind of stuff do you guys geek out on? And I know oh. you love Star Trek. And what else? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, this is heaven for me. Uh, I'm, this is my fir first time I've ever been to Comic Con, actually. So I, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Welcome home. Uh, it's uh, it's it's the greatest. I we went and did a photo shoot yesterday and it's just the, to get the opportunity to sit down and talk with people about things that I am equally as passionate about is just thrilling you know and, and this episode and that episode and oh my god Benedict Cumberbatch I love him and yeah, just, <laughs> you know, things like that you know where you can just bond with another person it's fantastic so um, yeah no it's it's this has been great I can't wait to get out there and and walk around we're just trying to yeah, figure out how to, where to go and, and uh, when to do that. But it's, it's definitely coming. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. I've been watching you enjoy it. Like, yeah. It, well, I was just back here, too, and I'm playing uh, uh, Battlefront, you know, the new Star Wars Battlefront. I mean, it's fantastic, first of all. You know, and, and I, I, I get the opportunity, you know, to send those photos to my jealous son right now <laughs> it's like i just can't he wait would love it here oh no he'd go crazy and um yeah so so we're that's definitely been one thing that uh, we've been looking forward to to playing together so i'm very excited it's good to have that preview yeah, yeah. another question go ahead anyone uh, go for Some it bracelets yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. hey Hi. Hi. Um, this is mostly for Christian because my 13-year-old self is totally freaking out right now. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to ask you because you were... We all have a little 13-year-old inside us. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm freaking out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you were kind of the first person that I fangirled out about. Um, so I was wondering how, say, in the last 20 years or so, that has changed for you and in terms of how, you know, kind of Hollywood has changed and this whole kind of nerd culture and everybody oh. obsessing over social media. And yeah. How do you feel now versus then? Wow. Uh, yeah, great question. Uh, it's definitely, yeah, it's changed. I mean, things have grown so exponentially. It's, it's incredible. Uh, uh, I mean, I, one movie I did, uh, Pump Up the Volume, you know, I was just, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, we, we were talking about that, and, and um, you know, th this, I guess there's similarities, you know, that was an anarchist type character, and, you know, the technology that we had available at that particular time, you know, for me to carry the message was a ham radio, you know, it was like sort of the first podcast type situation, and now things have just grown in such a, a phenomenal and amazing way and it's great uh, it's it's exciting and fun to be a part of uh, but also you know very dangerous and you have to be very careful and um, you know certainly keep an eye on like who your kids are talking to and and uh, pay attention to that sort of stuff so as wonderful as, as it is you know it's definitely definitely something I think uh, I still need to learn a great deal about and uh, yeah we all need to, to be careful and, and aware because there is so much exposure and we have to be very cautious about the messages that we're putting out there and things that we're saying and uh, you know people see it now and, and it gets captured forever um, so they see everything yeah they see they see everything so so um, I'm just 
you know, to, to the best of my ability, you know, my life is pretty streamlined and I love it right now. It's fantastic and uh, just very happy. And uh, I guess the only opinion that really much matters to me nowadays is probably my wife's and, and my kids. That's it. Those, those are the three. Yeah. That's a great answer. Thanks, dude. Hey, guys. Nice. First of all, I just want to say there's a whole lot of sexy going on up there. <laughs> you included. Thank you. <laughs> Carry on. Secondly, I think one of the great things about Elliot is he's a character that all of us can identify with. Our anxieties, our social anxieties, everything that we go through. The other great thing I love about the show is breaking the fourth wall. I think it was in the second, I haven't seen the third episode yet because I've been down here, but the second episode you're like, you thought I forgot about you. Yeah. And I love that. That is just one of the most awesome things. Thirdly, it's got a real fight club feel to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And this is one of the things, the parallels that I've been looking at between that and The Matrix on a little lesser level. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel and how do you kind of process getting into Elliot's head, not just from the psychological level, but from the drug addict level? Because that can be really heavy. That can be a really dark space that you have to go into. So how do you pull yourself out of that after you've delved so deep into it? Uh, that's tough. It's not easy for me, because I like to go to those dark places. <laughs> I, I just get drawn to it, I, you know, once I, I, I invest like that, you know, I start thinking about Elliot and how, it's like you said, how relatable he is. He's, you know, he's lonely, he's sad about the world that he lives in. Maybe he thinks he can change it, but he's, he's also grieving for the, you know, loss of, of someone he really cared about, his best friend. And, uh, and he's numbing himself with, with morphine. And so, I, you know, I always thought about, is, is he a drug addict? Is he a junkie? You know, how do I pull myself out of it? Me as an actor? Well, I'm there. I'm trying. Huh? <laughs> I'm surrounded by really good, fun people at work that, you know, in between takes, I can't wallow and be this guy, this sad guy. So I'm, I'm just jumping around, hopping around, telling jokes and poking fun at everything. Uh, It's intense. Uh, and he is yeah. phenomenally find, committed. I mean, yeah. that's the other thing, too. I mean, he is so professional. It's, it's really an Thanks, amazing man. thing to watch. I, I, I love it. I really do take longer showers. I'm not kidding. I'm like f scrubbing him off of me a little bit. Yeah. And it helps. It's therapeutic, but I'm like, okay, you're spending way too much time in here, man. Wow. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Guys, yeah, that's great. I hate to be this guy. No, it's so much fun. Oh, man, this is great. Thanks, making it easy on me. <laughs> I can't say uh, how wonderful it is to have you gentlemen here. Thank you very much. Thanks. This was my Good favorite panel. thing so far. Yeah, Thank you for best. having us. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. Mr. Robot, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching the show. Thank you. Thank you very much.